Hey everybody, Steve here for Who Took My Dice, and welcome to another episode of Ramble On. Uh, this time we're going to be looking at where the fluff went. Um, ever since 9th edition, really, but a little bit 8th edition, uh, more, more and more of the books seem to be losing their fluff. And uh, lots of people have been mentioning this. I'm going to talk, give my two cents on it and sort of see where the fluff is actually going and if it really is a bad thing or good thing that it's kind of not as there as much as it used to be. But before that, please like, hit the subscribe button and please share with your friends. Uh, so let's get down to it. So something you notice with the rule book, with the Space Marine Codex I've got here, even the Necron one, I haven't seen any others, but I'm sure that trend is continuing. Um, a lot of the fluff has disappeared. A lot of the fluff has uh it's just been cut down now is this a good thing is this a bad thing well let's look at the space marine codex here uh and and take a look so like i said a lot of the timeline stuff is gone uh this one because the new space marine codex covers all the chapters major chapters in some way uh they're all sort of described there but a lot of it is basically just descriptions of what each unit does there's not too many ways in the you know things in uh, uh, stories, um, stuff like that. There's certain things like Curse of the Wolf in here, uh, Heat of the Forge, little things that kind of give you a glimpse. Now this disappearing is that a bad thing or a good thing? It's both. It's bad because fluff is what gets a lot of uh, of the newer players in. When they start playing Warhammer Forty Thousand, they don't really know what units are the best units yet. They're not aware of the meta. They're not aware of which army has the really cool stuff. What draws them in is is this stuff: the cool artwork, the cool stories, the uh, you know the, the the epic battle reports. That's what pulls people in. That's what, like, I remember when I got in, it was because of the cover of the Ultramarine Second Edition Codex. This looks so freaking awesome. I was hooked, and I read the stories in there, and that just fired my imagination, got me really excited to build these this army. Without that fluff, that that's a little bit harder to do. Not impossible by any means. Uh, is it good? Yes, and there's a reason for that. Because of all the new rules. If we look at the, the codex here, um, I'm going to go, there's the Battleforge rules. Well, look at it. About half the codex is descriptions of the units, little tidbits on the armies, and the uh, the insignium and Astartes, all the the, uh, the chapter symbols, the icons for different companies. But then we get into the rules, and a good chunk of that. Is just the crusade rules, uh, the relics, warlord traits, stratagems. Again, very, very important. And this book does have to cover a lot of armies for that. Now, the big reason why I think why it's not such a bad thing is the sheer amount of units that space marines have. And the armies are always getting new units, right? We've seen that. From going from the Primaris Captain, the first choice they show, all the way to the Hammerfall Bunker. It goes from page 126 to 194. So a good half of the book is just units. All the different units. Some get one per page, two per page, depending on, on how big of a unit, how much information is acquired on it. But with all these new units, it, there's only so big or so thick these books can be before they just become too unwieldy to be carrying around. Um, so definitely... I think that's one of the main reasons why some of the fluff is left. In the rule book, again, there's so many rules. And this ties into other things like the fact that Games Workshop is now definitely paying more attention to the competitive side of 40k than before. Uh, I remember when I was working there, even six years ago, one of the big uh, sort of unwritten mandates is that Games Workshop was a company that made models that just happened to have rules. And they were big on just getting models out. Yes, they put rules out. But now, if you look at their community page even, they have the Meta Watch. There's The FAQs are coming out far more regularly. Um, yeah, what else? Uh, they just everything, everything seems to be making everything as balanced as can be. The explanations for rules. Uh, the It just seems very, very, very... I, we like to call it legal speak, where everything is very, very much spelled out, which means it take, requires a bit more room. So obviously with Games Workshop trying to appeal to the competitive side, some of that fluff side has to disappear. Now, a lot of people say it's gone. To me, the fluff has actually been moved to other places. 
for instance, uh, when the Psychic Awakening books were coming out, there was a ton of fluff in there, uh, lots of stories, a lot more fluff was going to use. So that may be something. You may see more of these campaign books and expansion books giving us the fluff where this is giving us how to play the army and the rules. This is giving us the cool stories and events to use armies in. Uh, the other thing was on their community page, to go back to this, there was a ton of downloadable fluff stories that connected to each of those books. There was a whole bunch. I think it was two or three. I might be wrong. There was like two or three for each book. Uh, they're still doing it now with uh, the new uh, Heated Knights of Slanesh stuff that's come out for Age of Apocalypse. Or Age of Apocalypse. Sorry. I've been reading too many comics. Age of Sigmar. Um, there's been two, there's been a bunch of stories about that, that are tying to that. So I think the fluff as with a lot of things is going digital. We are at a digital age. Everything is online. You can get all your codices, all your rule books on your smart devices. If you want, you don't need to even buy, buy the paper cup, uh, copies anymore. It's all digital now. So I think a lot of that fluff is going to places where it's easier to access. Uh, company wise, it also makes sense to maybe spread the fluff out of it instead of putting everything in one book. Put it in this book and then, of course, draw people's attention to the Black Library books. There's been a ton of stuff around, uh, around uh, Mar uh, not Marnius Calgar, Gulliman and his crusades and all this extra stuff. It's been, f that that's what generates a fluff. You read those books going, man, I really like those characters. I really like those units. I really like that particular part of the army. I'm going to rebuild it on the tabletop. So definitely the fluff is not... In my opinion, here's my two cents. The fluff is not disappearing. It's moving. It's going to different places uh, that's far more accessible than before. I love the fact that they put all these little stories. It added that personal, like, you know, on the ground feeling um, that you don't usually get from some of the stories in here. It's cool. You get these cool descriptions, these massive battles, but you don't get the, the Marines point of view directly or the Tau warrior or the Eldar Farseer's point of view from these things, you get the wider, bigger picture. So, and that's, what's cool. I like the, the more on in the, the battle view that these characters can give. So I think that's, that's the main reason why fluff is disappearing from these. They need more room for rules. Uh, they need to put stuff out digitally because that's the age we live in. Let's be completely honest. We have for last, I'm going to say 20 years of digital stuff. Um, also, people don't connect the same way to these books anymore. They buy them online. They buy them through their smart devices. So it's it's uh, I think it's Games Workshop trying to reach out to everybody, uh, and maybe some people just aren't used to it uh, to that yet. They are sort of buy, still going through the old process. I mean, I've had the digital copy of the last bunch of codices. But I really wanted this one. I like the feel of having a book. Maybe I'm old school that way, but I don't care. I like it. I like having the ability to run through the pages, take a look at the artwork work without having it on a screen or on my computer. I get to I get to appreciate the time and energy that went into these things. And a lot of it is still very, very fun. So my main point, if there is a point at all, don't worry yet, guys. I know some people are losing their minds over this. The fluff is still there. It's just not where it used to be, and that's okay. That's cool. Um, hopefully, I'm, I'm going to see if I can if I can find a copy of the Dark Angel one or get a look at it. Some other ones, maybe, because that one is sort of a supplement to this one. Maybe we'll see some of the fluff in there. I know the Ultramarines one stalls a ton of stuff, and there's a nice description of all the different uh, 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 companies. Uh, some cool background on all of them. Again, cool background stories for, you know, the obviously everything that happened in the Battle for McCraig. You know, the Tyrannic War veterans, for instance, there's a nice little fluff in there that kind of updates them and brings them up to to the, the, the new dark millennium. Um, but I'll leave it there, guys. Let me know what you think. Has the fluff disappeared too much? Are you, do you, are you not a fluff junkie? Are you a big fluff junkie? You really need to know the stories. Do you not care? Do you care? Please let me know down below. Please. I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, and as always, thank you very much for watching through these things. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.